Hello my dear friends, I am again back with some more MCQs. I hope you all are preparing it very well. If you have any confusion, you can drop a message anytime and uh, please tell us whether the MCQs are helpful for you all or not. So we will move towards today's video which is from different writers. Question number one. Though an icon of the romantic period, his works are in some ways the least romantic of the group. He favored traditional forms over new innovations. He preferred satire to introspection and in English bards and Scotch reviewers, he ridiculed his fellow romantics as being inferior to the neoclassical poets. Who was he? Option A. William Wordsworth. Option B. Lord Byron. Option C. Samuel Taylor Coleridge. And option D. John Keats. So it is Lord Byron who criticized romantic poets even though he himself belonged to that particular period. English bards and uh, Scotch reviewers uses the popular neoclassical form of the heroic couplet. In it, Byron calls Saudi the ballad monger. Question number two. Though she wrote during the Romantic period, she is usually classified as a Regency writer. Her works do not generally exhibit the viewpoint of the Romantics. Indeed, she has even been called anti-romantic because she seemed to value sense more than sensibility. Who is she? Option A. Mary Lamb. Option B. Mary Shelley. Option C. Jane Austen. And Option D. Charlotte Boronte. Here, Option C, that is Jane Austen, is correct answer. In Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibility, she satirizes the sensibility of her age through the character of Marianne who matures throughout the novel. The Regency began in 1811 when the Prince of Wales began to serve as regent for the insane King George III. This occurred during the period of time which is generally referred to as the Romantic period. Question number three, this author perfected the historical novel but he or she always wanted to be known as a poet. Who is he or she? Option A, Charles Lamb. Option B, Jane Austen. Option C, Mary Shelley. Option D, Sir Walter Scott. So it is Sir Walter Scott who perfected the historical novel but still he wanted to be known as a poet. Let's see the highlighters. This author of Waverly, Rob Roy, The Heart of Midolthian and Ivan Ho wished to be known for his poetry because at the time it was considered the more distinguished literary form. He published his ballads in three volumes called Mince Tulsi of the Scottish Border. This forerunner of romantics regard himself as some of the prophet. He created his own mythology which is expressed in such works as Jerusalem and the Four Jewels. Who is he? Option A. William Blake. Option B. John Milton. Option C. Robert Burns. And Option D. Dante Rossetti. So it is William Blake. Which is the answer. He regarded himself as something of a prophet. He created his own mythology and he expressed in such. These are expressed in works like Jerusalem and the Four Jewels. Blake is best known for his songs of innocence and of experience. Even this work possesses a prophetic tone 
presenting the poet as a prophet hear the voice of the bard who present past and future sees these are the lines from his work this early or pre romantic writer is as well known for his scottish songs as for his poems who is he option a sir walter scott option b robert burns option c samuel taylor coleridge option d william blake so it is option b robert burns he wrote his poetry in the vernacular using the scottish dialect his old lang syne has become a popular new year's song question number 6 we know him best as a writer of supernatural poetry but in his own day he was better known for his religious prose who was he option a william wordsworth option b samuel taylor coleridge option c lord byron and option d john keats so it is st coleridge who is best known as a writer of supernatural poetry coleridge supernatural themed poems kubla khan christabel and the rhyme of the ancient mariner are often studied in schools today his religious writings however are largely ignored yet he is credited by some with having brought the younger generation back to the anglican church question number 7 robert browning criticized this romantic for abandoning his ideals and becoming conservative also that he might in browning's opinion received a reband to stick in his coat who is he option a william wordsworth option b sir walter scott option c samuel taylor coleridge option d p b shelley so here option a that is wordsworth is correct let's see the highlighters the reband was the poet laureate ship which wordsworth received in 1843 the quote comes from the lament the lost leader which also alludes to the traitorous act of judas just for a handful of silver he left us question number 8 This romantic writer used Elia for a pseudonym. He was unusual among the romantics in his preferences for the city over the country. Who was he? Option A: Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Option B: William Blake. Option C: Charles Lamb. Option D: William Wordsworth. So it is option C: Charles Lamb. who used pseudonym as elia to write during his period his essays of elia was published in 1825 his last essays of elia in 1833 in his essays lamb also used a pseudonym for its sister mary brigett together the two wrote a children's book called tales from shakespeare Question number nine: He died of tuberculosis at the age of twenty-five, but not before leaving an impressive body of poems, including "To Autumn" and "Odd to Odd on Melancholy." Who is he? Option A: John Keats. Option B: John, Lord Byron. Option C: Samuel Taylor Coleridge. And option D: Percy by C. Shelley. So it is option A: John Keats. John Keats died because of tuberculosis at the age of twenty-five, and he was the one who gave us odes like "To Autumn" and "Ode on Melancholy." Let's see the highlighters. Despite his short life, many consider Keats to be the foremost poet of the Romantic era. Shelley eulogizes the younger poet in the poem "Adonias." Question number ten. She was a proponent of a woman's right to be educated. Her daughter must have received a suitable education, because she, the daughter, wrote Frankenstein. Who is she? Option A, Mary Byron. Option B, Mary Shelley. Option C, Mary 
Wollstonecraft and option D Mary Lamb. So it is Mary Wollstonecraft who propounded that women should be given right to education and she implemented the same in her house as well. Wollstonecraft's uh, Vindication of the Rights of Women is one of the earliest feminist works. Her daughter Mary Wollstonecraft Godwin became Mary Shelley upon her marriage to the poet Percy Bysshe Shelley. This author of To a Skylark died by drowning. Here options are option A Percy Bysshe Shelley. Option B, Lord Byron. Option C, John Keats. And option D, Mary Lamb. So here it is Percy by C. Shelley who died by Johnny. Shelley was a good friend of Byron's and uh, both poets met early deaths. Shelley is also well known for his Ozymandias, Odd to the West Wind and Adonias. Question number 12. Technically, he wrote during the Victorian period, but his work is considered to be a product of American Romanticism. He himself, once an idealist who spent time in utopian commune, he lost hope in the power of social reformation. However, his Blithdale romance depicts a character so intent on reforming humanity that he does not seem to care for individual men and women. Who is he? Option A. Edgar Allan Poe. Option B. Washington Irving. Option C. Herman Melville. Option D. Nathaniel Hawthorne. So it is Nathaniel Hawthorne who wrote during Victorian period but his work is considered to be a product of romantic American Romanticism. He himself was once an idealist who spent time in utopian commune or countryside. He lost hope in the power of social reformation. However, in his work Blithdale Romance, we get to see talking about humanity. Hawthorne describes holding Worth's philanthropy in gasty terms. He had taught his benevolence to pour its warm tide excessively, sorry, exclusively through one channel so that there was nothing to spare for other great manifestations of love to man, nor scarcely for the nutriment of individual attachments unless they could minister in some way to the terrible egotism which he mistook for an angel of God. Hawthorne's House of Seven Gables similarly expresses a negative view upon utopian visions offering a more moderate optimism. Question number 13. This American romantic once said, I stand for the heart to the dogs with the head. Who is he? Option A. Nathaniel Hawthorne. Option B. Washington Irving. Option C. Edgar Allan Poe. And option D. Herman Melville. So it is Herman Melville who said, I stand with the heart to the dogs with the head. Melville wrote this in an 1851 letters, letter to Nathaniel Hawthorne. In this in his later years, he seemed to have moderated his view somewhat. His novel, Billy Bud Sailor, depicts big-hearted, innocent young man who, because of his nevit, meets his doom. Question number 14. Byron wrote, And the might of the Gentile, unsmote by the sword, hath melted like snow in the glance of the god. In which poem, in what poem did these lines appear? Option A. On the day of destruction of Jerusalem by Titus. Option B. Song of 
Saul before his last battle. Song of Saul before his last battle. Option C. Herod's lament for Miriam. Option D. The destruction of Sena Cherib. So it is option D which is correct. The destruction of Sena Cherib. This is the work where we find these lines. Byron was asked by a friend to write poems that would accompany music originally used in synagogue. As a consequence, Byron produced the Hebrew melodies which contains the famous poem She Walks in Beauty. Question number 15. This fundamental work of Romantic period was published by William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge. What was it? Option A. The Heart of Middlethian. Option B. The Lyrical Ballads. Option C. The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. And Option D. English Bards and Scotch Reviewers. So it is Lyrical Ballads which was published in 1798 collectively by William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge. The Lyrical Ballads first published first appeared anonymously in 1797. In the preface to this work, we find the romantic definition of poetry, the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. It takes its origin from emotion recollected in tranquility. To question number 16, to start at the beginning, which novel was the first winner of the Booker Prize in 1969. Option A. The Elected Member by Bernice Rubens. Option B. Something to Answer for by P. H. Newby. Option C. Figures in a Landscape by Barry England. And Option D. The Public Image by Muriel Spark. So it is Option B which is correct that is Something to Answer for by P. H. Newby is the first winner of Booker Prize in 1969. Newby's novel set at the time of the Swedish crisis is now almost forgotten. Rubens, the elected member, won the following year in 1970. Figure in a landscape and the public image were both on the 1969 shortlist but failed to win. Question number 17. To date 2002, there have been two years in which the judges awarded first prize jointly. Which two novelists held this distinction in 1974, the first time it happened? Option A. William Golding and Anthony Burgess. Option B. Iris Murdoch and Kingsley Amis. Michael Ondaz and Barry Unsworth. Option D. Nadine Gordimo and Stanley Middleton. So here the winners were Nadine Gordimo and Stanley Middleton respectively. Let's see the highlighters. Goldimer's The Conservation List and Middleton's Holiday won the prizes. On Dads and Unworth shared the honor honors 18 years later in 1992 with English Patient and Sacred Hunger respectively. Burgess' Earthly Powers was piped at the Post by Golding's Rite of Passage in 1980. Amis, Jake's Thing, lost out to Murdoch, The Sea, The Sea, in, 17, in 1978, but went on to win it shelf, went on to win it himself in 1986 with The Old Devils. Question number 18. In 1993, to mark the 25th time the prize has been awarded, a special award was made to the Bookers of Bookers. 
choose as the best of all the previous winners which author won it option a j m kotzi option b william golding option c salman rusdi and option d iris murdoch here salman rusdi is the correct answer specifically for midnight's children which he won in 1981 salman rusdi has also been shortlisted to shame which was published in 1983 the satanic verses 1988 and the moors last shy in the year 1995 burial bainbridge holds the dubious distinction of having been shortlisted the most times having without having actually won to date 2002 on how many occasions has she appeared on the shortlist option a 7 option b 6 option c 5 and option d 4 so the correct answer is 5 question number 19 for the let's see the highlighters the dressmaker which was published in 1973 the bottle factory outing 1974 an awfully big adventure 1990 every man for himself was published in 1976 and master georgi in the year 1998 william trevor is now one behind with our unsuccessful nominations question number 20 the following four novels by margaret atwood were all shortlisted for the booker prize but which was the one to win it option a alias grace option b the handmade stale option c the blind assassin and option d cat's eyes so the correct answer is blind assassins the blind assassin won in 2000 the fourth occasion on which atwood was shortlisted Dear friends I have completed day 22's MCQs as well I hope it was beneficial for you all do let me know whether it is helping to you all or you require something else do let me know till then we meet keep practicing and keep asking questions more to yourselves thank you everyone we will meet soon take care